When we think of steel, most of us imagine something strong, heavy, and reliable. Maybe the beams of a skyscraper, the blade of a knife, or the frame of a car. Steel has been the backbone of modern civilization for well over a century. But here's the thing. Not all steel is created equal. In fact, one of the most important categories of steel is something called alloy steel. Today, we're going to break it down. What exactly is alloy steel? Why does it exist and why is it so widely used? You've probably heard the term before, maybe in relation to car parts, tools, or even kitchen appliances. But what does it actually mean? Let's dig into the story right here on History of Simple Things. First, let's remind ourselves what steel itself is. At its core, steel is an alloy of iron and carbon. Pure iron, as strong as it might sound, is actually too soft for most structural uses. Add a controlled amount of carbon, usually between 0.2% and 2%, and suddenly you get steel, a material that is much stronger, more durable, and versatile. So if steel is already an alloy, what makes alloy steel different? Alloy steel takes things a step further. Instead of being just iron plus carbon, it introduces other elements, things like chromium, nickel, molybdenum, vanadium, manganese, or even tungsten. These additional elements, called alloying elements, are added deliberately and in specific amounts to give the steel new properties. Think of it like cooking. Plain carbon steel is like a simple dish made of rice and water. But alloy steel is like adding spices, sauces, and extra ingredients to change the flavor and texture. Depending on what you add and how much, you can end up with a material that resists rust, handles extreme heat, or can take a beating without breaking. The reason we add elements to steel comes down to performance. Different environments demand different qualities. For example, if you're making a bridge, you need steel that can handle both tension and compression over decades. If you're designing a jet engine, the steel parts have to withstand searing heat without losing strength. If you're producing surgical instruments, the steel must resist rust and maintain sharpness. Plain carbon steel can't handle all of these situations equally well. That's where alloy steel shines. By tweaking the mix of elements, metallurgists can design a steel perfectly suited for its job. Let's go through some of the most common elements added to steel and how they change its properties. Chromium, probably the most famous since it's what makes stainless steel resistant to rust. Just a bit of chromium dramatically improves corrosion resistance. Nickel adds toughness and makes steel perform better in low temperatures. Nickel steels are used in cryogenic storage tanks, where regular steel would become brittle. Molybdenum improves strength at high temperatures and increases resistance to wear, essential for parts exposed to intense heat and pressure. Vanadium refines the grain structure, making steel tougher and more fatigue resistant. This is especially useful in tools and high-stress applications. Manganese improves hardness and wear resistance. It also helps remove oxygen during steel making, which strengthens the final product. Tungsten boosts hardness and maintains it even under high heat, making it perfect for cutting tools and drill bits. Each of these elements can be added in small amounts but even fractions of a percent can make a huge difference in performance. Alloy steels are usually divided into two broad groups, low alloy steels and high alloy steels. Low alloy steels contain only small amounts of alloying elements, usually less than 5%. These steels are often used in construction, pipelines, and automotive parts. They balance cost with performance making them versatile and affordable. 
High alloy steels, on the other hand, can have more than 5% of alloying elements. Stainless steel is the most famous example, with at least 10.5% chromium. High alloy steels are more expensive, but are chosen when specialized properties are absolutely essential, like extreme corrosion resistance or the ability to handle high temperatures. The process of making alloy steel isn't radically different from making carbon steel, but the control has to be much more precise. It usually starts with melting iron ore or scrap steel in a furnace. Once molten, carefully measured amounts of alloying elements are added. This is where metallurgy becomes both a science and an art. Too much of one element can make the steel brittle, too little and it won't achieve the desired properties. After the alloying is done, the steel is cast into ingots, billets, or slabs. From there, it can be rolled into sheets, forged into parts, or heat-treated to fine-tune its properties. Heat treatment, things like quenching, tempering, and annealing, is especially important for alloy steels. These processes control how the atoms are arranged inside the steel, which directly affects hardness, toughness, and flexibility. Now let's bring this out of the factory and into everyday life. Where do you actually encounter alloy steels? Automotive industry. Gears, crankshafts, axles, and engine parts often rely on alloy steels because they need both strength and fatigue resistance. Construction. Skyscrapers, bridges, and pipelines use low-alloy steels that balance strength with affordability. Aerospace. Jet engines and landing gear use high-alloy steels that can endure extreme conditions. Energy sector. Oil and gas drilling equipment, as well as nuclear reactors, depend on alloy steels that resist heat and corrosion. Everyday tools. Wrenches, drill bits, kitchen knives, and even scissors are often made from alloy steels designed to stay sharp and strong. In short, alloy steel is everywhere, even if you don't realize it. So, what exactly is alloy steel? In simple terms, it's steel that has been deliberately seasoned with other elements to give it special properties. It's stronger, tougher, and more versatile than plain carbon steel, and it comes in countless variations depending on what it needs to do. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.